Tell you what, that Senate line looks better and better the shorter it gets. All right. Mr. Green, would you open us with prayer, please, sir? Push your button. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Let us pray. Father, as we stop to thank you for the many blessings that thou hast given us, let us be mindful of our duties here at the State Capitol. May we be mindful that we are representing the people. And Father, we ask you to be with us in these closing days. Guide us and direct us, and we, may we make those right decisions. And may we be followers of the Lord Jesus Christ and love each other. And Father, we just ask you now to go with us and guide us and direct us in all things. In thy holy name we pray, amen. Thank you, sir. All right, Senators, we got one little item of business we have to attend, a couple of items of business we have to attend to before the Committee on Rules meets. The Rules Committee will meet right now. It's our standing committee. Uh, we have two resolutions that will be presented. Um, we'll either vote those out or not. And from that point, we'll go on to um, the Committee on Rules, which will determine which bills hit the House floor. I'm going to call on Representative Sharon Cooper to present H.R. 603. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. House Resolution 603 establishes a study committee on the certificate of need modernization. Uh, given all of the concern and the movement on the Senate side to do a complete uh, abolishment of CON. This is to look at all aspects of it, what needs to be modernized, how it will affect uh, hospitals and uh, freestanding clin clinics and all aspects of our healthcare system here in Georgia. Does anyone have a question for the sponsor, six, HR 603? Okay. I guess now it's time to take a vote. Do I hear a move to pass? Got a move and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. I'll oppose like sign. Do pass. Thank you. All right. H.R. 604. Chairman Knight. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I present before the committee House, Resol House, House Resolution 604. This would uh, let us form a study committee to make sure that we are properly funding our technical college system of Georgia. As you know, the technical college system is uniquely positioned to make sure that Georgia has uh, the workforce uh, in place that it needs, certainly as we continue to grow and face these, these needs. And we want to make sure that we're adequately funding them, especially in regards to uh, some of our higher cost programs. and. Uh, we want to make sure that they can be successful in what we have tasked them to do. Okay, does anyone have a question for the sponsor on the creation of this study committee as it relates to the technical school funding? All right, seeing none. I hear, well, I hear, move, move, do pass. Amen. Got a move in a second. All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed, like sign. All right. The H.R. 603 and H.R. 604 just passed out of committee, and they will uh, be given to the clerk so the clerk can read the report, and then we will probably be looking at these along with a lot of other study committees as it relates on Wednesday. Most of our study committees will be done on Wednesday. All right. Now. Senator Robertson, did you get your deal taken care of with your caucus over there? You got. Oh, do you need to go ahead and get in front? He, he did come ask, so go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate the consideration. Go um, ahead. Mr. Chair, I'm here on uh, SB 36, which is a uh, increasing the penalty on pimping and pandering in Georgia. SB 37 that deals with um, the Office of Sheriff and revising qualifications. SB 63 on bonds and recognizance uh, in Georgia. SB 92 on prosecutorial oversight. 
I believe those are the uh, the four that I have. They are all on page one, Mr. Chair. Anyone have any questions on something? Both sponsors? All right. See you now. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Ms. Hughley. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, to Senator Robinson, now on this um, Senate Bill 36, are we raising uh, mandatory minimums for these, or, or are you saying that judges are not prosecuting these offenses? Or, or what, what is, what, tell me how we got here. We've increased the uh, penalty for pimping and pandering. We're currently the first offense to sell another person or buy another person as a misdemeanor. We're increasing that to a felony. And the, and the, and there's minimum mandatories. The, the sentence can be uh, up to 10 years and it can be probated, uh, suspended. The judge still has a discretion on how the sentence is, is carried out, but it would be on their record as a felony. Yes, ma'am. Okay, anyone else have a question for the sponsor? All right, seeing none. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right, Mr. Albers, come on up. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning. I've got two bills. The first one, uh, second down on the first page, is SB 217. It's my understanding that might be a, a bill in a different form on a substitute, uh, and I believe it's going to help to curb in some of the uh, cleanup for the school zone cameras. Uh, and I want to thank Chairman Collins for the great work he and I have done in partnership on that. And then I've got Senate Bill 13, which allows the sheriffs uh, to conduct the auctions they do today uh, online. Okay, I don't see any questions. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. Yes, sir. What's your bill number? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Senate Bill 211, and I had a pleasure of presenting it um, one day last week, and I just want to reiterate it again that uh, uh, we worked very closely with uh, Representative Bethany Ballard and Representative Will Wade in complementing Senate Bill 211 along with House Bill 538. And this is to create a Georgia Council on Literacy. And this passed the um, House Subcommittee on Education with no opposition, passed the Education Committee with no opposition in the House, and of course passed our Senate with no opposition. So I, I would love to, uh, for uh, Representative Ballard is going to present it, hopefully. Well, I don't see any questions. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. I have two bills in front of the committee this morning, SB 107 on the top of page 2 and SB 137, about midway down the page. I want to thank the committee. We have a rules committee substitute on SB 107. I'd like to thank uh, Speaker Pro Tem Jones and her staff for their good work with this. This is a bill that requires an aquatic safety plan to protect Georgians who are taking private swim instruction. Second bill is Senate Bill 137. <clears throat> this is a House Higher Education Committee substitute. I want to thank uh, Chairman Martin for his work in this. It does two things. It provides for the opportunity to tuition equalization grants and combines uh, representative uh, from the whatever. <laughs> Chair, lady, Chair Lady from the whatever district that is. Uh, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll figure it out in a minute. Uh, but it, it allows us to put 228 and 137 together, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Well, see Sorry, Katie. I, 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 had a, I had a brain mis malfunction. Okay. I don't see any more questions. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Come on up. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have Senate Bill 68, third one up from the bottom on the first page. This uh, concerns dog fighting. It allows prosecutors to use the RICO Act for people caught um, dog fighting for the second time. It allows them more prosecutorial, um, being able to prosecute them under the RICO Act. Okay, I don't see any questions. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Mr. Walker, are you feeling better? Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. It's good to be back among the land of the living, so. Well, let's see. Okay. Tell us that Wednesday night about midnight, so we'll <laughs> go ahead. Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, good morning, committee. 
All, I have three bills, all of our on page two. Senate Bill 110, our Back the Blue Act. Uh, this We have asked more and more out of our law enforcement, and we are recognizing that with pay raises in the budget for our state law enforcement officers. This is a measure to try to help our sheriffs, uh, deputies, and jailers. Uh, there are constitutional officers, as you know, the sheriffs are. They've got duties prescribed that they have to carry out in the Constitution. Uh, sadly, many of their deputies are woefully underpaid and their jailers. Uh, this would allow uh, citizens to donate $5 with their vehicle registration to the Back the Blue Fund, which would be distributed to the 159 county sheriffs for use in bonuses for deputies and jailers. It passed uh, unanimously out of house insurance with a lot of improvements suggested that we accepted. It also passed unanimously out of house motor vehicles. I'd appreciate your support on that one. Uh, Senate Bill 195 addresses two things. It's a priority for the Georgia Defense Commission and our defense communities. Uh, we still struggle with occupational licensing for military spouses. Your enlisted men that are, are by no choice of their own are sent to Georgia to serve. Uh, their spouses are having to wait sometimes 90, 120 days to be able to go to work. Uh, this, If they meet seven qualifications, this would give them an expedited license in 30 days. It'll also help our workforce shortage. Uh, Senate Bill 240, uh, we had a hearing over the summer with the school bus drivers, cafeteria workers, custodians, and uh, maintenance people in the schools. They're under the PEACERS uh, retirement plan, and this bill, uh, we recognize that's a, a very, very low retirement, and uh, these people are not very well paid. And this bill would survey the school districts to find out which ones are offering Social Security. Uh, if they're not, what substitute plan they're offering in addition to PEACERS. Uh, and there's been some language added in the House that I am ag agreeable with that addresses a charter school issue that I'm not all that familiar with. Uh, and then I think there's maybe a third piece that's been added in the House that I'm in agreement with. Okay. All right, Mr. Blackman. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. T uh, to my senator, uh, isn't Senate Bill 195 something that's been requested by the Department of Defense for our state and is occurring in other states? that 30 day window for our spouses and then does it also not build on some of the legislation that Representative Al Williams has put forward years back um, with regard to our spousal licensure in our military? I appreciate the question Mr. Chairman, absolutely does. You and I both serve on the Georgia Joint, Joint Defense Commission and this has been an issue that's been raised at each and every meeting we've attended uh, and I would say it's a number one priority for us to try to solve to be a military friendly state in the eyes of the Department of Defense. Okay, Mr. Williamson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Chairman Walker, thank you for uh, bringing Senate Bill 110. Is it not true that this is a, a low cost and effective way of, as your title says, back in the blue uh, and get more resources or money to our local sheriff's department? Is that not true? I, I believe it is, yes, sir. Thank, thank you. Thank you for bringing the measure. Appreciate your suggestions and committee that we incorporated. It's a much better bill than it was when it first started. All right. Don't see any more questions. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Hold on. Yes, sir. I, I tried to get with you over in the Senate as, um, while you were out last week. The, the bill is it passed, and, and I'd worked with Chairman Blackman on, on your behalf last week, I'd like to talk with you about it because the bill as passed conflicts with HB 155 that has passed the House and the Senate it's on the governor's desk. I, I don't think it's your intent to take the rest of Georgia backwards while you bring the military spouses forward, and we had a, a substitute that we'd like for you to look at to avoid that conflict. Um, uh, Mr. Chairman, I think uh, Chairman Blackman worked on that last week. It, it gets the 30 days that the senator is is interested in and, and preserves the, the expedited licensure for the military spouses. Okay. What was that number again? The Right to Work, Freedom to Work Act? 195. Yes. 
Okay. All right. Thank you. You'll have a chance to talk with him off, offline. All right, Mr. Anna Batardi. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and committee. Um, I have three bills, Senate Bill 92. Um, it's a school, school security alert bill um, we've presented before in the past. Um, Senate Bill 97, the original bill was a Cyber Command Act um, working to beef up our cybersecurity apparatus in Georgia. I know this bill is now a vehicle for something else. Um, couldn't to totally tell you what it is, but I know it involves cannabis. Um, Senate Bill 112 is a Workforce Acceleration Act, um, setting up pilot workforce sites across the state. Um, and again, as I said in the last meeting, just appreciate the collaboration with the House to um, get us to the point where we're at with Senate Bill 112. Mr. Jaspers. Yeah, thank you, Senator Avatardi. I appreciate you working with us on the Senate Bill 112. Are you satisfied with the position that bill is in now? Thank you, Mr. Yes, Chairman. Uh, Senator, uh, Representative Jaspers, we're giving you a promotion. No, no. Um, yeah, I, overall I am. I think there's a couple of minor wording tweaks that I think it may need. I can um, visit with you and leadership and Chairman Martin offline. I think overall it's kind of moved in the direction that we needed to move in, definitely. Well, thank you for your work on that. Thank Appreciate you. No, thank you for your help. Ms. Cooper. Uh, can you explain what does it do about cannabis? I'll, I'll let the, uh, the representative who uh, has language on, on Senate Bill 97 talk about it. I couldn't go through it right now if you ask me questions. I'm just being honest. <laughs> Mr. Powell. Thank you. Is it not true that uh, you had offered up uh, eight, uh, SB 97 to be used to uh, promulgate some of the changes in the, uh, the legislation proposed to clean up the Cannabis Act? Yes. Yeah, Representative Powell. I know when I was uh, asked if uh, there was interest in y'all uh, utilizing uh, Senate Bill 97, I said, go ahead and knock y'all selves out if you want it. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay. All right. I don't see any more questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Chair Lady Taylor, do you have a question? Okay. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Members of the committee, I bring before you two bills, Senate Bill 31. Basically what this does is if the Attorney General has to go in and prosecute a case where a county DA does not want to prosecute that case, that DA gets reimbursed lodging and expenses uh, for that, that trial. Uh, he must in, um, get a guilty plea or guilty verdict. He then submits his receipts within 15 days to the county Superior Court judge, and that Superior Court judge then looks at those uh, receipts and sees to see if it's uh, uh, proper um, billing, and uh, that's what this bill does. Okay. That's Senate Bill I 31. See, I don't see any questions on that. Okay. Go. The second bill is Senate Bill 132, and basically what this does is both um, Chairman Perkel and I ran companion bills on prohibiting the Chinese Communist government from buying farmland or land within 25 miles of a military base. He got further on his bill. I passed mine out of the Senate. When it got to um, the committee, we stripped mine out and inserted uh, Chairman Perkle's bill. So it's, it's really Chairman Perkle's bill, but it makes it much stronger. And uh, there are five countries that are on the particular concern list that we do not want to allow uh, buying our property. We think it's a uh, national security issue. Agriculture is the number one industry in the state of Georgia, and we want to protect our farmland, and that's what this bill does. Mr. Park, do you have a question? Yes, Mr. Chairman, thank you. How much of this bill would prohibit non-citizens from owning land in the state of Georgia? It, it has nothing to do with discriminating against citizens or, or anything like that. It just prohibits these five countries that are on the U.S. Commerce uh, Department's um, really particular concern or really our adversaries' enemies from buying our farmland or buying land within 25 miles of a military base. Th th that's not the question I asked. Um, how, how, how much land in the state of Georgia would this bill cover? 
it would it would be agriculture land and, and 25 miles and within land within 25 military. miles of our military bases uh, that, as you know this last year the communist Chinese government bought land adjacent to a military base in North Dakota uh, I would think they're spying on us and we don't want to allow that in the state of Georgia one more question, if I may. So, so based on multiple folks and just in reading the language of the bill itself, which clearly states individuals um, and non-citizens, um, it, it does appear that the bill is unconstitutional and, and violating the 14th Amendment's due process clause, uh, along with um, the equal protection clause, as well as, as well as potentially the supremacy clause. Do you have any concerns about the unconstitutionality of your bill? No, I, I think it's constitutional. If you look at the Logan Act of 1799, this makes this constitutional. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Don't Chairman. Don't see any more questions. Thank you. Okay, now let the games begin. Oh, just a little FYI, for anyone who has a rule substitute, two or three things you have to do. Number one, be sure that uh, Leo has your original ones and twos. Be sure that you have 40 copies. Be sure that if there's someone who is um, proposing a rules substitute, there has to be somebody on the rules committee to present it. If you're not on the rules committee, then you, ne you cannot present a rules committee substitute. But if you have a rules substitute that you won't heard, you have to abide by those three or it just sits. We've got four or five setting up their proposals. Um, one of them we don't have, the one and twos. Can't do anything without those. So be sure that you abide by the rules and regs as it states. Um, because if you don't follow those three rules, it will never make it here for it to be discussed. Okay. We have a rule substitute for Senate Bill 92. The rule sub is LC 47259S, 47259S, and it'll be presented by Leader Efstration. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is um, Rules Committee Substitute SB 92, LC 47259S. This uh, legislation is a follow-up to the work done by Representative Gullett and others to address the need for a prosecutorial, prosecutorial oversight commission. It includes uh, language that was uh, com compromised upon with uh, the Senate sponsor, and uh, we have a final bill for the Rules Committee to consider here today. I would ask for the committee's favorable consideration. Okay, I don't see any questions. Thank you. All right. I guess there's a time for it moved. I hear a move. Move. move and second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed like sign. It. Did somebody say no? Okay. All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed like sign. It passed. All right. Second rule substitute, and it's for Senate Bill 127. It's under structured. Rule sub LC 432859S. LC 432289, I mean 2859S. And Chairman Blackman will present that. Go ahead. Mr. Chairman, it contains two measures that receive favorable consideration in the House, additional to um, the uh, original part of the bill, which is marketing destinations. Um, I think Chairman Stevens has been carrying. Uh, but at this time, I would ask that the committee hold off on adopting the substitute. Okay, so we'll, we'll hold it. Yes, sir. Okay. Well, we can do that. Won't hurt my feelings at all. 
Are we going to hold for four days? <laughs> You're the chairman. You're the chairman. <laughs> All right. I'd love to do that. Okay. I guess now is the time to set the calendar, a supplemental uh, for today, day 39. Goodness. You know, if, if you'd have told somebody this, they wouldn't have believed it, if you, unless you lived through this process. You know, it's just, you, you couldn't write it down. Anybody believe what, you, what goes on here in the last 10 days? It's just strange. Okay, day 39, supplemental calendar for today. Uh, Senate Bill 11, do I hear a move? Move and second, it's on. Senate Bill 56, do I hear a move? Uh, move and second, it's on. Senate Bill Rule Substitute LC 47, 2519S, do I hear a move? move. Got a move and a second, it's on. Did the leader over there say move? <laughs> 92. Under Rule Sub LC 47-25-19-S. Okay, next one on the page. Uh, Senate Bill 97. There he'll move. Move. Now move in a second. It's on. Senate Bill 137. There he move. Move. Now move in a second. It's on. Senate Bill 145, do I hear a move? move. Got a move in a second, it's on. Senate Bill 160, do I hear? Oh. Which one, 145? You, you didn't like the Christmas tree lapel that he pinned, that he wore in his lapel the other day? Okay. Well, we have an object, so I guess the procedure is our, we have a move and a second to pass. Sorry about that, folks. Um, we have an object on Senate Bill 45. Uh, I mean 145, excuse me. 145. Um, all in favor, raise your right hand. Right hand. 
You know, it's like we were doing baseball, you know, your other right hand, you know, just. Okay, all opposed? It passed. All right, got to call on the, uh, our leader. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move that Senate Bill 56 and Senate Bill 97 be removed from the floor consideration calendar for further consideration in the Rules Committee. You got to move to re remove 56 and 97 from the calendar. Do I hear a move? move. Got a move and a second. All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed, like sign. They're off the calendar. All right. SB 160, do I hear a move? move? Got a move and a second, it's on. Senate Bill 211, do I hear a move? move. Got a move and a second, it's on. Under structured, Senate Bill 127, do I hear a move? move. Got a move and a second, it's on. So let's run by those one more time. Senate Bill 11. Senate Bill 92, uh, Rule Substitute LC 472519S, SB 137, SB 145, SB 160, SB 211, SB 127. That's the rule substitute for today. Now remember, if there. Oh, my mistake, my mistake. I can't read, my, I don't read my own writing. Okay, my mistake on 127, it was recommended that it be held by uh, Chairman Blackman. Um, since I messed up, do I hear a motion to hold? No move and second, all in favor say aye. It's, it's held. Will not be on the cal supplemental calendar for today unless we have another supplemental calendar. Okay, now remember, if there is a rule substitute, three things you have to do. Mr. Leo Chancy, you have to give him the number ones and twos, the original legislation. You have to provide 40 copies, and there, are, there has to be a member of the rules committee itself to present the substitute. No one else can. You cannot have, you can't have the speaker come up here. Of course, he could, he could take over and run the whole thing himself if he wanted to. But, but you know, but um, it, uh, it has to be someone who's on the Rules Committee. All right, meeting's adjourned until the next meeting.